Let me first of all thank my beautiful bride. She and I just celebrated 33 years of marriage together. And can you imagine being married to me for 33 years? Give her a great round of applause for that alone. <laughs> I want to thank our great members of Congress. Let's give it up for Elaine Luria and Bobby Scott. You are so lucky to have them. And the greatest sitting governor in the history of America we have in the House with us today, Ralph Northam. I want to thank uh, and his beautiful bride. Let me be honest, folks. There are two women sitting there, the present first lady and the former first lady. No two women have done more to lift up children, pre-child education, feeding hungry children, these two women. I thank them for their great service. And how about our next Lieutenant Governor, Hala? And our next Attorney General, let's give it up for Mark. And for a Democratic House of Delegates. Can, can you imagine with this team going, with all the action we have going on with the House of Delegates, let me promise everyone here tonight, this state is going to take off like a booster rocket. I'm going to feel bad for those other uh, 49 states by the time we finish up in four years. But And let's give a great shout out. I want to thank Pharrell, who was with us here tonight, who came out. Listen, he has done more to lift up small businesses. He has never forgot his native home here in Virginia. He has never forgotten the Hampton Roads. Every day he gets out of bed trying to lift people up. And I want to thank Pharrell for being here with us today. I also see a bunch of our members of the General Assembly. Let's give our whole General Assembly a great round of applause. And the two greatest mayors in America we have this year, your mayor, Kenny Alexander, and the mayor of Richmond, Virginia, LeVar Stoney. And the greatest sitting vice president in American history with us here today, Kamala Harris is in the house. So as everybody has said, folks, we only have a few days to go. I cannot tell you how critical this election is. The stakes could not be any more clear. On one side, you think what we have over there, conspiracy theorists. We've got anti-vaxxers and we got Donald Trump. They're all on one side. From the day he got into this race, Glenn Youngkin has run a campaign of hatred, division, and fear. He promotes fear of vaccines. He promotes fear of voting machines. He promotes fears of those that have different religions. And he even has fear of books. I mean, think about this. If you look at my closing arguments, it's about education. It's about health care. It's about job creation. What is his closing argument? Going after Toni Morrison's book, Beloved. I mean, think about that for a second. The shame that that brings on the Commonwealth of Virginia. And think about this. There are hundreds and hundreds of books that maybe people might have issues with that are in our school curriculum. Why is it that Glenn Youngkin went after the most famous African-American novelist in the history of the United States of America? She has won the Nobel Prize. She has gotten the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And she's won a Pulitzer, Toni Morrison. Why did he pick her out? Uh, do you think that was a coincidence? So that's what you've got from day one. He got in the campaign on election integrity. It's all he talked about. He's now closing his campaign about banning books by black authors. That's been the campaign of Glenn Youngkin. On the other side, for all of us that are running, you have a broad coalition of Virginians who care about health care, making sure everyone gets affordable health care here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, improving education, growing the economy, making sure all of our roads work. And I just want to say this to everybody in Hampton Roads. Eight years ago, when I came in office with Ralph, your transportation system was a mess. We saved the Port of Virginia. It was bankrupt when we took office. Do not forget that. 
We did the 64 road project, 564, Hampton Roads Bridge, Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel, Chesapeake Bay Bridge. Everything you wanted, we did for you over the course of the last eight years. That's what democratic leadership is all about. And don't forget, we bought down those tolls and we ended the excessive toll and fines on your citizens here in Hampton Roads. If you remember that day I came down here, those three African-American women had $50,000 of bills. I took those bills on live television and I just ripped them up and said, we're not paying them here in Virginia. An Australian company will not come to Virginia and rip off our citizens. And they got the message, folks. But here's what we're going to do. I've got 20 comprehensive plans about how to take Virginia to the next level. 166 very serious plans of what I want to do. When you get a chance, review them. But let me tell you right now, we're going to create great jobs in every corner of the Commonwealth. I promise you this. We will get $15 an hour minimum wage by 2024. <clears throat> we will make child care more affordable here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We will get paid sick leave here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And we will get paid family medical leave here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And guess who's against all of those things? Glenn Youngkin. And we are going to bring down the cost of prescription drugs. We're going to fight hard to make sure everybody has access. Working Ralph and I, we have a goal working together. We will be the first state in America where every one of its citizens gets access to quality, affordable health care. <laughs> Folks, we know it. We, we know we can do this because we've done it before. When we came in office back in 2014, we inherited a gigantic deficit. Our economy was in total chaos, if you remember back then. We got to work. 200,000 new high-paying jobs. Personal income went up 14%. Unemployment dropped in every city and county when we had the governorship here in Virginia. We leaned in on clean energy to create those jobs of the 21st century. And Glenn Youngkin, he just said the other day on Wavy TV during the debate that he doesn't believe that humans contribute to climate change. <laughs> he was asked in the debate if he would have signed Virginia's Clean Economy Act. You know what he said? He said no. Well, let me tell you, I just got in here. I drove down from Northern Virginia, and half the roads were closed today because of the flooding that's gone on from the rainstorm we have. You cannot come here and not see the damage. Right here in Hampton Roads, the sea level rise has gone up 14 inches since 1950. Think of that. This is serious. That's why I need you to get out and vote. I've worked very hard. We did record investments in education, infrastructure, and transportation. But make no mistake, we did this by working in a bipartisan way. We'll work with anybody if it's good for Virginia. We worked with reasonable Republicans. But Glenn Youngkin is not a reasonable Republican. And it's not just about banning books and election conspiracy theories. It's also about education. Glenn Youngkin wants to follow Donald Trump and Betsy DeVos's model. He has said time and time again that he will take money out of public schools and put them into private schools. Let me tell you this as governor, folks, not one penny will come out of our public schools and go to private schools. Three independent studies have said that 43,000 teachers would be cut. Are you kidding me? We can't have that here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. But what bothers me the most about his education ideas is he has used it to divide Virginia. He has pitted parents against parents. He's got parents against teachers. And he's bringing his personal culture wars into our classrooms. Let me tell you this. I promise you, we will not let Glenn Youngkin use our young children, our students, as political pawns for his political campaign. So here's what we're going to do for you. Oh, next four years, we are going to raise teacher pay above the national average for the first time in Virginia history. We will get every student in Virginia online immediately. 
will get pre-K to tens of thousands of children. And I'll tell you this, I am so sick of this campaign of what Glenn Youngkin has said. All he has done is run down our schools, he keeps running down our state, and he's run down our teachers. So I want every teacher to listen to me carefully. We love you. We appreciate what you have done, and you have been the heroes of COVID. Let's hear it for our teachers. And, and then on COVID, Glenn Youngkin has already brought in Trump's anti-science agenda. You know what he said? Day one, all masks come off. And no teachers required to be vaccinated in Virginia. Think about that. We have had 1,142 of our children in hospital beds who are dealing with COVID. Recently, two 11-year-olds died here in Virginia from COVID. This is serious. And thank God we had a doctor in the governor's office to help us get through this COVID. So let me be clear, when I'm governor, I want every doctor, I want every nurse, I want every teacher, I want everybody to be vaccinated here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. He goes on right-wing radio shows and says, oh, if you don't want it, don't take it. Oh, there's good reasons not to take it. No, they're not good reasons. And then let's talk about the big issue, the big issue of abortion. We all know what's happened and the seriousness of this. Women's lives will be put in danger. He wants to bring the Texas law here to Virginia. He got caught on tape saying he will ban abortions and defund Planned Parenthood. And then he says, oh, but we're not going to tell anybody about it because if they find out, they won't vote for me. Women of Virginia, listen to me carefully. If Glenn Youngkin is elected governor, abortions will no longer be available here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. For 50 years, the Supreme Court has protected Roe v. Wade. Now it is the Trump Supreme Court, 6-3. They are going to eliminate it. You saw what happened in Texas. You know what they're going to do in Mississippi. Glenn Youngkin, we do not want your anti-abortion rhetoric and laws here in Virginia. <laughs> Ralph and I brought a lot of companies. I remember I'm the one who recruited ADP to come here to Norfolk. Thousands of jobs. Governor Northland will agree. There's not one of these companies that would come to a state that bans abortions. And he said the other day he is against gay marriage. If you put walls up around your state, the companies, the 21st century, the Amazon, the Googles, the Facebook, the Microsoft, they're not coming to our state. And that's what Glenn Youngkin, he will put women's lives in danger. He will put doctors in jail and he will destroy our economy. So folks, we got less than a week to go for you to bring this baby home for me. Are you ready? So our campaign has knocked on, to date, 1.5 million doors, including 150,000 last weekend. And this weekend, over 200,000 doors will be knocked on. So thank all of you for being out there and doing what you're doing. And we've just gone about 900,000 people have already early voted. Now, I'm winning the early vote 60 to 40. So I need you to get everybody to go early vote by 5 o'clock tomorrow. If you haven't voted, I need you to get in those polls. Get those folks out there. We need you out there. We need you to do it. Because let me say finally, 40 states in this country are rolling back voting rights. They're taking them away from citizens. Here in Virginia... Through the great work of the folks here, we've actually expanded voting rights. We had a 45-day early vote. We had Sunday voting for the first time in Virginia history. And this is personal, me voting rights. As you know, as your governor, I leaned in on a 102-year-old racist Jim Crow law that if you commit a felony, you never get to vote again. I felt that was wrong. 40 states, it's automatic. And a lot of people said, oh, don't do it. It's too complicated, too complex. You'll get in trouble. They'll sue you, blah, blah, blah. I didn't get out of governor, run for governor to worry about what other people said. So in April of 2016, 
with a swipe of my pen, I gave 173,000 Virginians back the right to vote. That is more than any governor in U.S. history and is the largest in franchise voters in over 100 years. We understand this here in Virginia. You cannot let them take it away. And I don't want them to say after Election Day, oh, we gave them all this expanded voting and they didn't use it, therefore take it away. We can't have that happen, folks. I want Virginia to be the symbol of democracy. Those other 40 states, look what happened in Virginia in 2021. They are the model of democracy for the United States of America. So that was my best day. And I'm going to close with this. My darkest day was Charlottesville. When a thousand neo-Nazis and white supremacists came into our state, they marched through Charlottesville. You could see the hatred in their faces. You could hear the hatred in their words. You could smell the hatred in their torches as they marched down. After that horrific violence that day and Heather Heyer was killed and we lost two state troopers that day, I begged the President of the United States on the telephone to do the right thing, to come out and condemn these folks and call them out for what they were. He refused to do that, President Trump, if you remember, and he called them fine people. So I did what the President should have done. I told these white supremacists and neo-Nazis to get the hell out of Virginia, leave our state, and don't you ever come back to Virginia. The people who marched on Charlottesville represent a very dark part of America. A group of people who actually believe in white supremacy. They believe in hate and they believe in violence. Politicians have encouraged it. Even after that, and even after the January 6th insurrection, Glenn Youngkin said that Donald Trump represents so much of why he was running for governor. <laughs> Folks, Virginia, we are so much better than the politics of hatred. And in the next three days, we are going to prove it. Let's get out, let's vote, and let's keep Virginia blue. Thank you very much.